story of power unleashed, the search for a creator, our fear of the unknown and our fascination with the grotesque. It can only be Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Then he sensed he was being watched. And in the tank, through the murky liquid, he could see an eye staring at him. And then losing focus and drifting, listing, he put a horse's eye in that head. But I haven't put the charge through you. You can't have quickened of your own accord. And he peered over the rim of that tank and suddenly that creature's mouth opened, took a breath of air, the chest filled, the arm raised up and splashed him. No! This is an abomination! This is an abortion, a monstrosity! You can't have taken life of your own accord! You're not ready! And with that he went up the stairs, up to his chamber, and he took out his logbook and his notebook, and he started examining it. What have I done? It can't have quickened of its own accord. The art of public storytelling has grown immensely over the past decade, and never more so than on the south coast of England, home to the annual Sting in the Tail Festival of Stories. Organised by Edale, the Eastern Dorset Arts, Leisure and Entertainment Forum, the festival involved many artists, including Wei Yong, or Silent Hobo as he is known, whose enchanting illustrations featured across the promotional literature. Oh, maybe I should talk to someone who works here. <laughs> maybe see, see if they... Oh, oh, who are these weirdos? The clown! Whoa, Flaps! A real little girl! A real, live, little girl! You, you are a real little girl, aren't you? Doof, you clap! Oh. You'll freak her out before we've even introduced ourselves! Oh, sorry, boss. Don't do it again! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend here, kiddo. Uh, he's not very sensitive, are you, Doofa? I've got tickly feet, <laughs> Over 10 days, some of the UK's leading storytellers performed across an interesting range of venues, including an Iron Age earth house, 1950s model town, a country park, museums and libraries, and the beautiful Highcliffe Castle. He sounded like he was speaking in Windy Pop for a minute there. Eh? Then came the cry of the barber. The king's got donkeys! And the musician was amazed. That was amazing, was it? Around, but most of them are looking up at the musician's gallery, and the king has gone red as a beetroot, and he's fuming. And if he could have had steam out of his ears, it would have been steam coming out of his ears. Send for the barber! But the musicians tried again, and they blew. The king's got donkeys! Can you first of all just tell me a bit about yourself and your storytelling background? Ah, <sighs> well, I always love reading fairy stories and stories with some like Narnia and stuff when I was a kid. And at school, it was always story subjects that I was quite good at, you know, like history, RE and English. Yep. I could remember those. When you think we had to actually learn it, it was much, much harder. So I think I always had a sort of story brain. Okay. Um, and then I was at a festival where they had a series of storytelling workshops and I thought, I didn't think such a thing existed. Storytelling, that sounds great, that sounds me. So I went along and um, they had about five and only went to two, so I didn't really go anywhere with it. But then the same chap who'd organised these for this long convoluted story. <laughs> I kept meeting the chap in other festivals and other events and I'd ask him how his storytelling was going. And he was one of these super enthusiastic chaps that would tell me all about how it was going on. So in the end I thought I must give it a go. And so I sort of advertised for other people that wanted to tell stories. And we started meeting around people's houses and just telling stories. And that's how I built up a repertoire. And then here in Christchurch, oh, about 1994, they had these leaf festivals. For about 10 years, they had local ecology and arts festivals, which they would include storytelling evenings. And I went along to one and asked permission to tell a story, and they didn't know who I was. You know, was I any good? So they put me on after the beer break. And, uh, you know, 
who is she? People still coming back. And afterwards, there was a local storyteller came rushing up and said, oh, I didn't know there were any other storytellers in the area. I thought, I'm a storyteller. <laughs> My first public performance. And from that, I was getting offered work and all sorts of things. Um, and uh, I got involved in, I found out about the Society of Storytelling and then the Storytelling Festivals. And of course, I find it much easier to learn stories from hearing other storytellers than just reading a book. So um, that's how it all began, really. <laughs> He was sweating. He thought he was going to die. In a very, very short time, he was flat on the floor. Turning around, oh, and then complaining. Maybe the frogs were not fresh that morning. Maybe the caterpillars were a bit too spiky. We don't know. There is something rather intriguing about storytelling. People have come away from these events feeling like they have witnessed something a little bit different and just a little bit special. Stories have the power to inspire, delight and mystify us all, whatever age we may be.